Should regulated utilities be allowed to own and make money from the solar panels on your roof? It's a hot debate in the solar industry, so let's take a look. I'm Julia Piper, and this is Rewired from Green Tech Media. By the end of 2015, there could be one million solar systems connected to America's grid. The vast majority of those installations, around 900,000, will be on the rooftops of homes. Most of those rooftop systems aren't being installed by the local electric utility. They're coming from third-party solar companies that are circumventing utilities and going straight to consumers. That's how the solar business has always worked, and utilities have historically been fine with a bit of PV sprinkled here and there. But solar is now big business. According to GTM Research, U.S. PV installations were valued at $14 billion in 2014. Now that all those solar systems are starting to cut demand for power and change how the grid operates, big electric companies want to capture as much of that value as they can. Seems reasonable, right? Well, that depends on what kind of utility you're talking about. No one would argue that unregulated utilities should be prevented from owning rooftop solar. That's because these companies operate in the free market, alongside their solar installer competitors. In the last three years, we've actually seen a handful of unregulated utilities and competitive retailers invest directly in solar installers. These companies see solar as a money-making enterprise, a good sign for the overall market. But when a regulated utility wants to get into solar, it's a different story. In recent months, we've seen a couple of regulated utilities in Arizona propose plans to own rooftop solar. These plans have been met with passionate opposition from solar advocates who see them as a way to crush third-party competition. Why this reaction? Unlike competitive suppliers, regulated utilities are often guaranteed a rate of return on their investments. That means they can go to a regulator and if the program is deemed cost-effective, the utility will get paid back and earn profit with ratepayer dollars. No solar installers have this benefit. So if regulated utilities can control who installs solar under their own programs and get a guaranteed payback, is that fair? We debated that question on stage at GTM's recent solar summit in Phoenix, Arizona. Court Rich, a prominent Arizona attorney who represents national solar companies, says utility-owned rooftop solar is not needed and anti-competitive. For a hundred years, they've been advertising on our basketball stadiums, our parks, our schools, with money that we've all paid for them uh, to do that with. And how on earth is a private company supposed to compete with that? They can't. There's no you know, guardrails and unicorns, whatever you want to do. None of them are real or going to work in this situation. Lon Huber, a former ratepayer advocate in Arizona, believes that utilities should have every right to own rooftop PV as long as there are certain restrictions. If you structure their participation correctly and you have guardrails in place, you can have a situation where they don't monopolize the market and private industry is able to flourish alongside the utility. So let's assume more regulated utilities start to own residential solar. According to supporters, what would those guardrails be? First, the program would need to compete on cost with the private market. Second, it would need to focus on underserved markets like low-income households. Arguably, utilities could do a better job of reaching those customers who often can't afford to install solar on their own. And third, the utility would need to share non-confidential data with private companies about where solar is needed most. Plus, utilities would not be allowed to penalize competitors for connecting to the grid. With those rules in place, argued Lon Huber, the utility and solar companies could operate side by side while continuing to lower costs. If they adhere to these principles and start thinking creatively, and, and maybe they have to make a few compromises that they normally wouldn't make in their traditional way of, things, but, way of doing things, but I think they can reach cost parity and maybe a little bit below now that solar's come down in price. But Court Rich and many others in the solar industry don't buy the cost argument. From a cost perspective, you know, I mean, utilities aren't famous for driving down costs, right? I mean, their, their goal is to have it cost more, whereas my clients and companies that are out there competing with each other, their goal is to have it cost less. So is it possible to have a world where utilities can rate-based solar while maintaining a competitive market and keep costs low? Well, we don't really know the answer yet. This is new territory for everyone. But we can certainly expect more utility proposals like the ones we've seen in Arizona. And as that happens, the debate will spread from the stage to the states where supporters on both sides will undoubtedly clash. I'm Julia Piper, and this is Rewired. Thanks for watching.